All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So we just got word, we just found out where teams were going to go with their waiver claims, right? Their waiver pickups. And a bunch of big names got moved. Alex Leatherwood to the Bears, Kellen Mond to the Browns. I mean, I was not expecting Mond, such a young quarterback, to already be let go by the Minnesota Vikings. But this is what happens when you have a brand new regime enter the building and run the organization. Who else? Tyler Johnson to the Houston Texans. I feel like that was a really, really underrated pickup. And by the way, Ian Rappaport tweeted out the full list. I'll find it. I'll leave it linked down below in the description box if you guys want to go check it out. Uh, it's pretty interesting. But when we get to the New York Jets, they claimed nobody. The Jets didn't add a single player. And on the flip side, they lost 11. They lost 11, okay, because of the guys that they recently, uh, recently released. A lot of guys got picked up. I have the full list right here. Let's go through it quickly. A lot of talent here. You know, are these guys top five, top 10 at their given positions? No, clearly not. But they are talented guys. They, they, they are players that I personally, I mean, in some cases, I wanted on the 53-man roster. Uh, first up, Javelin Guidry going to Arizona. Jason Panak claimed by the New York Giants. Chuma Adoga, Atlanta Falcons. Isaiah Dunn, Seattle Seahawks. Trevon Wesco, Chicago Bears. Wild Goose to the Commanders. Uh, Elijah Riley to the Steelers. Um, who else here? Uh, Hamako Rashid to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Derek Kelly Saints, uh, Mo Font to the Browns, and Delshawn Phillips to the Baltimore Ravens. A lot of those players, you know, when, when we first saw the, the initial cutdowns from the 53 man roster, it seemed like the Jets wanted to keep some of the, uh, keep some of those guys on the practice squad. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I felt like a lot of you guys probably felt this too. Jason Panak. You, you felt like he was going to get claimed. Like the upside is there. The physical traits are there. The positional versatility is there. Javelin Guidry, he's another guy. You know, I, I felt like he could have been the backup slot corner on the roster. Now we're taking a look at the 53 man. You know, some positions are completely fine. Tight end, awesome. I love it. Running back, I, I'm cool with it. Bam Knight making the roster. You know, you got the two studs, at, at, you know, at, at the top of the roster in Michael Carter and Brees Hall. You know, quarterback, obviously. Wide receiver is another one. Uh, but then there's others where it's like offensive tackle. You know, we got George Fant, great. We got Dwayne Brown, awesome. We got Max Mitchell. Connor McDermott was let go. Chuma Adoga is now on the he's now on the Atlanta Falcons. Sorry about that. I tend to uh, lose my train of thought when I'm filming on my phone. And I just see a bunch of notifications popping up right underneath the camera here. But basically what I was saying was, uh, you know, the Jets are really, really thin at, at tackle. You know, Chuma Doga is now a member of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, no more Grant Hermans. We're looking at the 53-man roster. The Jets have three tackles. And the third backup swing guy is a rookie. You know, I like Max Mitchell a lot, but if he's thrusted into the starting lineup year one, uh, I, I don't know if he's going to be ultra productive. It's not a knock on Max Mitchell, but just where he was as a college prospect, I really like him a lot in years two, years three, years four. I mean, another position is safety. You know, Whitehead, great. LaMarcus Joyner, a solid short-term option. But behind those guys, Ashton Davis made the roster over uh, uh, Jason Panak. He made the roster over Will Parks. Both of those guys had really solid training camps. I mean, we look at Panak last year. I felt like there was, I felt like he was a given to make the roster. And I don't want to keep harping on one player here, uh, but it just seems a little odd to me that this was a guy that Joe Douglas selected in the draft last year. He wasn't an undrafted free agent pickup fighting tooth and nail to make this team. He was handpicked by JD. He makes the roster as a corner, spends the entire training camp preseason, early parts of the year as a corner, makes a late transition to safety because everybody's hurt and looks pretty good. You know, considering he hasn't really, he wasn't drafted as a safety. He didn't play in preseason as a safety. And he looked pretty good back there against Tampa Bay, you know, a, a formidable team to say the least. At the end of the year, Pinock looked really good. Considering that safety is one of the weakest positions on this team to let go a guy with game experience, again, the, the, uh, the long-term potential, it's a little... I'm not going to lie to you. I, personally, I think it's a little concerning. You look at the roster now. Again, Whitehead, Joyner, great, but it's Ashton Davis and Tony Adams, an undrafted free agent. Credit Adams making the team, that's flat out amazing, right? That is totally, totally cool. I'm excited to see what he brings. But are the Jets fully sold? You know, I was, I kind of had an inkling yesterday looking at, you know, certain positions here. 
um, that moves were going to be made. You know, JD probably had his eyes on a couple guys, and you know, it, it's not to it, it's not to say that that can't happen. Of course, the Jets can go out there and, and still add a guy like Jaquesky Tart at the safety position. You know, they can still go out and sign a third tackle, but or sorry, a fourth tackle, a backup tackle here. Uh, that can still happen. But I'm just surprised that the 53-man roster came out the way it did, and no waiver claims were, or, or you know, no players were brought in by this Jets team. And on the flip side, again, we have so many players leaving the squad. I like Delshawn Phillips a lot. He, I mean, going back to the safety position, Elijah Riley, I felt like he looked okay in his time with the Jets. Isaiah Dunn, a, a physical corner with a, with a big upside, going to Seattle here. Derek Kelly, I believe, back to the Saints. Like, you know, again, are these guys the best players in football? No. But for a young, rebuilding team that has had injury problem after injury problem after injury problem, trying to fight their way up in the NFL from the bottom five, right, finishing fourth, just speaking uh, strictly about the record, a bottom five team in football, I felt like maybe some moves could have been made. The Jets were really high up. They were fourth in the waiver order. So it's not like they were sitting there 28 and they're just, you know, SOL. It's um, they had their chances. They didn't make any moves. I guess we just got to trust JD here and, you know, see what happens, see how it all unfolds. But um, personally, I would have wanted at least one young player considering how many guys are now leaving and the Jets have got to fill their practice squad. So we'll see how it, again, all plays out. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.